Welcome to Free Thought Matters. I'm Annie Laurie Gaylor, co-president of the Freedom From Religion Foundation. FFRF is the nation's largest association of free thinkers. That means atheists and agnostics and works as a state church watchdog to defend our constitutional separation of church and state. Join us in our vital work at FFRF.org or sign up for a sample of our newspaper, Free Thought Today. Did you know that many of the best-loved composers of the great American songbook were not religious? The writers or composers of Over the Rainbow, Summertime, Night and Day, and even White Christmas did not believe in a god. This week and next week, my co-host Dan Barker, an accomplished jazz pianist, will take us on a guided tour of the free thought influence on American music. Dan is at the Diane Yule Steinway Piano here in Free Thought Hall, Madison, Wisconsin. It's only a paper moon. That song was written by, the words were written by Yip Harburg, who was a non-believer. It's true that there's been a wealth of beautiful music in the world that's inspired by religion, but the world has also been greatly enriched by the work of composers and songwriters who were not religious. In previous shows, we've talked about many of the classical composers who were atheists or agnostics. Today, I want to talk about the great American songbook. Composers and lyricists of popular American music who were decidedly non-religious go way back in our history. Over the river and through the woods to grandfather's house we go was written by a woman named Lydia Maria Child, considered the first woman of letters in the United States, she wrote the lyrics to that popular song, which is often sung at Thanksgiving. Lydia Maria Child was raised Calvinist, but she rejected that faith and she joined the creedless Unitarians. In her book, The Progress of Religious Ideas, Lydia Maria Child said, it is impossible to exaggerate the evil work theology has done in the world. What a blooming paradise would the whole earth be if the same amount of intellect, labor, and zeal had been expended on science, agriculture, and the arts. She later defined true religion as simply working for the welfare of the human race. And Stephen Foster, first great American popular songwriter. He wrote both words and music. Stephen Foster was born on the 4th of July in 1826, which was the 50th birthday of the United States, the same day Jefferson and Adams died. Stephen Foster was a nonconformist. He never joined a church. He rarely went to church. He lived like a non-believer. Of his own accord, Foster wrote only secular music. O oh, Susanna, Camp Town Races, Old Folks at Home, Swanee River, My Old Kentucky Home. I Dream of Jeannie with the Light Brown Hair. At the end of his life, when he was poor and hungry at rock bottom, when he really wasn't getting any royalties for all of his songs, Stephen Foster needed money to survive. So he composed some Sunday school songs using some of his earlier secular music. The biographer George Eels wrote, Foster, who never expressed much interest in religion, who had resisted the urgings of his sisters to join the church, 
he wrote nearly 30 songs for Sunday schools. He hadn't found God, but he had found a publisher. Stephen Foster's positive, natural, anti-Calvinist views can be seen in his song, Some Folks Do. Some folks like to sigh, some folks do, some folks do. Some folks long to die, but that's not me nor you. Long live the merry, merry heart that laughs by night and day. Like the queen of mirth, no matter what some folks say. Some folks fret and scold, some folks do, some folks do. They'll soon be dead and cold, but that's not me nor you. Long live the merry, merry heart that laughs by night and day. Like the queen of mirth, no matter what some folks say. The lyrics for Foster's 1846 utopian song, There's a Good Time Coming. Do not point to an afterlife or to a theocracy. They yearn rather for a time of tolerance when religious divisiveness shall be eliminated. The lyrics say, shameful rivalries of creed shall not make the martyr bleed in the good time coming. Religion shall be shorn of pride and flourish all the stronger. And charity shall trim her lamp, wait a little longer. Scott Joplin was the king of ragtime, and Scott Joplin was not religious. He never wrote religious music. He was married in a home, not in a church, nor was his funeral conducted in a church. Joplin's early musical career took place in centers of entertainment, not in churches. He played the piano in a brothel and in a club, the famous Maple Leaf Club, that was shut down due to pressure from local churches, whose pastors were ashamed of the quote, iniquitous practices that were taking place in those establishments. You know what those iniquitous practices were? Dancing. No wonder Joplin rejected the church. Because, as biographer Edwin Berlin notes, the churches rejected what was important to him, ragtime, dance, and the theater. Whatever Joplin's private views may have been, it is clear that his music was not inspired by religion. Scott Joplin wrote a musical, it's called Trimonitia, which was for its day quite feminist with an intelligent female lead and quite irreverent, in which he mocks the useless pastor in the musical, whom he calls Reverend All Talk. And he encourages education, not religion, as the solution to the world's problems. All the things you are, 
written by Jerome Kern. Jerome Kern was known as the father of American music. Jerome Kern created the American style of Broadway musicals, breaking away from the earlier European style. The 1927 musical Showboat, with lyrics by Oscar Hammerstein, was groundbreaking in its integration of music and story. Songs such as Old Man River, Jerome Kern said that that was his favorite song of every song that he ever wrote. He also wrote The Way You Look Tonight, which you hear at a lot of weddings. Someday. Just the way you look tonight. With lyrics by Dorothy Fields. That one won the 1936 Academy Award song. Smoke Gets in Your Eyes. The Last Time I Saw Paris, A Fine Romance, Long Ago and Far Away, dozens more. Jerome Kern melodies have defined what it means to be a standard. Raised in a nominally Jewish family of German immigrants, Jerome Kern did not believe in God. He never consciously felt himself a member of the Jewish faith, which is why he would work on the Sabbath. He said, I don't let a single day pass without writing. He confessed, his religion, writes the biographer Michael Friedland, his religion was music and his lifestyle. In fact, his lifestyle kept him up partying very late one night, causing him to miss the ship to England the next morning. That ship was the ill-fated Lusitania. Jerome Kern's motto was, life is to be enjoyed. He wrote nothing and said nothing about God or religion. Nothing but blue skies do I see. Did you know that the writer of the song, God Bless America, did not believe in God? Or that the song was intended as an anti-war anthem? And did you know that the same man who also wrote the song, White Christmas, actually said that he hated Christmas? Irving Berlin is probably the greatest composer of popular American music with hundreds of enduring hits. Blue skies and always I'll be loving you always with a love that's true always. There's no business like show business. Anything you can do, I can do better. He wrote the song Cheek to Cheek, Alexander's Ragtime Band, just to name a few of the hundreds of songs that he wrote. Raised in a nominally Jewish family, Irving Berlin was never observant and never believed. Patriotism, 
was Irving Berlin's true religion, writes the biographer Lawrence Burgreen. Irving Berlin's daughter, Mary Ellen, wrote that he's not a religious person, but does not forget who his people are. God Bless America is not about God, it's about America. Irving Berlin wrote the song not to represent his views, but the views of characters in a 1918 musical. He ended up disliking the song, so he pulled it from the musical. Twenty years later, the singer Kate Smith dusted it off as an anti-war anthem when the song then became popular. And White Christmas It's not about Christmas or the birth of Jesus, it's about the season. Irving Berlin told his daughter that he actually hated Christmas, that he and his wife both hated Christmas. We only did it for, your, for you children, he said. Irving Berlin sometimes poked fun at faith. In 1922, he wrote a song called Pack Up Your Sins and Go to the Devil in Hades which was mocking the religious censors of his day. Pack up your sins and go to the devil in Hades is the perfect antidote to God bless America. Pack up your sins and go to the devil in Hades. You'll meet the finest of gentlemen and the finest of ladies. They'd rather be down below than up above. Hades is full of thousands of Joneses and Browns, O'Houlihan's, Cohen's and Brady's. You'll hear a heavenly tune that went to the devil because those jazz bands, they started picking it, then put a trick in it, a jazzy kick in it. They've got a couple of old reformers in heaven making them go to bed at 11. Pack up your sins and go to the devil and you'll never have to go to bed at all. Hi, I'm Ron Reagan, an unabashed atheist, and I'm alarmed by the intrusions of religion into our secular government. That's why I'm asking you to support the Freedom From Religion Foundation, the nation's largest and most effective association of atheists and agnostics, working to keep state and church separate, just like our founding fathers intended. Please support the Freedom From Religion Foundation. Ron Reagan, lifelong atheist, not afraid of burning in hell. It Ain't Necessarily So was written by Ira Gershwin and George Gershwin. Who would doubt that the world has been enriched by Rhapsody in Blue, American in Paris, Porgy and Bess, and hundreds of popular songs for which George Gershwin wrote the music and his brother Ira Gershwin wrote the words. They include The Man I Love, Somebody Loves Me, it's wonderful. Fascinating Rhythm, Lady Be Good, Someone to Watch Over Me. Someone to Watch over me. Strike up the band. How long has this been going on? I could cry salty tears. Where have I been all these years? How long has this been going on? 
I've got a crush on you. Embraceable you. I got rhythm, but not for me. They all laughed. Let's call the whole thing off. They can't take that away from me. A foggy day in London town. Nice work if you can get it. You can get it if you try. Love walked in. Our love is here to stay. And so many more beloved songs. George and Ira Gershwin wrote the songs and music for the groundbreaking opera Porgy and Bess, which was considered a flop at the time of George's death, but is now a great American opera. It includes the song Summertime. Also includes the song it ain't necessarily so the Gershwins were raised in a family of non-believing Jewish immigrants from Russia their household was so secular that their mother used to draw the curtains during the Sabbath and during the Jewish festivals so that their neighbors couldn't see that they had not lit the ceremonial candles Ira once rewrote the Passover Seder as a comic vaudeville performance, complete with a silly top hat and a cane. The lyrics to It Ain't Necessarily So from Porgy and Bess are quite free thinking. The things that you're liable to read in the Bible, it ain't necessarily so. One of the alternate verses that did not make it into the show, but was kept on hand just in case of encores, said this, Way back in 5000 BC, Old Adam and Eve had to flee. Sure, they did that deed in the Garden of Eden, But why chastise you and me? Now let me play one of my favorite Gershwin songs. It's called Our Love is here to stay.
Diane Barker will return next week for part two of our look at the free thinkers who helped create the great American songbook. Thank you for watching Free Thought Matters because free thought matters. Hi, I'm Steve Pinker. In my book, Enlightenment Now, I show that the world has become a better place as reason has been overcoming superstition and tribalism. But the values of the Enlightenment are under attack. That's why I'm a proud member of the Freedom From Religion Foundation, the nation's largest association of free thinkers working to keep state and church separate. Please join me in supporting the Freedom From Religion Foundation to ensure that our government is driven not by religion, but by reason.